Hey, how are you doing? Well, this is part two of day four. And just to catch you up to speed, I'm basically doing an over, uh, a recap of my seven years or seven and a half years pursuing an acting career in this industry and some of the things that I had to overcome from then to now and still. And in the hopes that some of my experiences or things that I may have learned or gone through can help someone else out there in some way or other. So today, I got, on Sunday, I finally got a basketball again. It's literally been, I want to say about, I can't even count how many years it's been since I've had a basketball. And I played, I played down in Harlem. It was Harlem week or Harlem, Harlem day. So I, I did that and it was great. It was wonderful. I, I think I got more ups now than I did when I was younger. I don't know how, <laughs> but yeah, it's good, good stuff. But that was so great. So I, I, I was so happy with that. So I'm just going to start off, I guess. I'm just going to bullet point everything out. You know, 2012, to recap, I had 40 auditions, 29 jobs, 12 to 15 of those were principal or, or day play or something of that nature. I also had 11 promo gigs. That's once I joined SAG-AFTRA and my job started to drop and stop immediately. And funny story, uh, you can't see it. Cause it's it's my it's like yeah I can you're not gonna see it if, if you don't see it already there I went I, I wanted to, to join I wanted to become a board member on the union in the union and I thought maybe I can kind of learn where what am I doing wrong you know how can I get working again I mean I couldn't even get a background job nothing and on my way there one day after headshots but on my way there, I was crossing the street in Midtown and I looked the wrong way. And when I looked back the right way, a Mr. Soft, the ice cream truck hit me in the head, straight up and down, like doing 40 miles an hour, right, the, right in the dome. Um, it was the mirror, the mirror part, uh, the metal frame. And that, my head rung for a little bit. I didn't go down. I didn't go down. I got a and, and I and I got a soft serve with sprinkles. But but I just I put a bandaid over my over my eye, and I continued to the SAG office. Um, I went in there, blood dripping, bandaid over, big blood blotted thing. You know what they said? Nobody's here today. And then that there are no more spots available. So I went and got stitched up afterwards. Five stitches. I think it was five or six stitches. Yeah, that was a bitch though. But it's a funny story. It's If I had more time, it would probably be funnier. But I got to some festivals I got some clothes. I made sure to get my, my clothes shopping, you know, like character clothes or, or nice clothes from the thrift shop. But you know what, though? If you go to the right ones, you can find some good high-end things. Take my word on it. For my craft, you know, I was working at the studio, working out daily or between four to six days a week. Sundays, I always tried to take off, at least nowadays. Monologues. Tough Guys New York, Filipino MMA, emotional prep work, script work, phrasing, stress words, uh, relations, meanings, just consistently just breaking down scripts, you know, so that you can, the more you do it, the better you are at it, the more, the easier it gets. Oh, I'm sorry, workable shows list. Now, I got a, a list of all the shows that were shooting here in New York at that time. Who was casting it? who was producing it, who, what was the production house, and I taped that up right next to my computer screen. So 
every single moment I was on that screen, it was there in the side in my side of my eye. So it kept me, you know, focused and in a direction. I had two two headshot sessions. One of them came from Model Mayhem. Another one through a friend. I had two lifestyle uh, photo sessions. That that was like the importance of, like I said, you know, those those certain sites. Marked man. That was my first principal union role. Well, no, my second. My first one was what I got my Taft Harley for, but um, here in New York, at least, uh, union. And <clears throat> it was a lot of fun, you know. I really wish that the, that the full film got shot. Uh, production has been on hold for financial reasons, I'm rather sure, because just from my personal experience with trying to produce a film, and it was like, it was another step, you know. It it was it went to a couple of festivals, like the SAG festivals or, or uh, showcase, and two others: San Diego Black Film Festival and one one other. It's not coming to me. Uh, Blood ties now. That was just fun. I, I was a stand-in in that. I just want to show the photos. I love the photo. But sister connection that came through a couple. Uh, set of twins that I know and I auditioned with, and then I got pulled in and, and did that. It was a Japanese thing. Didn't air over here. Boardwalk Empire. Now this, I had an experience here that I'm sure others have, have had too, but if not and it happens to you, just know that you're not alone. This came through my agent. It was for a role, recurring role opposite Michael Shannon in Boardwalk Empire. I was ready, I was prepared, three like three three uh, pages of dialogue. You know, I came dressed the part, I shaved, and besides when I went into rehab in Brooklyn, I did not shave, forget about it. I had goatee since I was in the 10th grade, ninth or 10th grade. I was ready. I walked in there, the casting director took one look at me and said, what are you doing here? I said, I'm here for the audition for such and such. She said, no, you're not. I was like, yes, I am. And they said that, that only people that are, are 30 and up can audition for this because of the, it's, you know, it's based on true peace. And I said, well, I am. And then they're like, well, it, it's already been cast. And it was delivered in a way that, that you just did, they just didn't want to see you. And I felt so upset. They gave me another thing to read with one line, one word. And I allowed that grudge to, to interfere with that. And it hurt me. You know, my my being full of myself or, or, I mean, yeah, it was a fucked up situation. It was really fucked up. You know, that was a week of my life or, or whatever, however long it was that I, I prepared. And to not be given a chance for whatever reason but I could have taken that smaller chance, you know, and, and done something with it. But I didn't. Don't do that. Just take a deep breath, deal with it when you get home, you know what I mean? Done. You know, I revisited uh, Teen Challenge and uh, the Bowery, you know, once I was kind of a little bit on my feet and I felt like I could show my face in a proud way, but not conceited way, if you know what I mean. The Bowery, most, most definitely, I wanted to give back. I wanted to volunteer. I wanted to give my time. And 
give back to the Bowery what the Bowery gave to me and you know what I found in that place but I was turned away because apparently with the Bowery and you know that's how they do it I respect that that's fine uh, they only take groups so I wasn't able I tried twice but I it's no avail even though I am official alumni of the place now but that's okay <laughs> it, I did get my certificate before before being forced out I made sure that I got that so I have my complete my proof of completion so fuck it now I just start sending donations at least I know that it's gonna go it, I'm helping in some way you know what I mean and and I learned that the people who in both instances they come against me or for reason, for unjust reasons, wound up all being yanked out of those places because they were found to have been relapsing, lying, practicing prejudice, uh, prejudice, prejudicism. Bowery, for instance, when I was bringing in ten thousand a week a month for them, that money was also supposed to go help me when I went on to the second phase to just kind of get me back out into society again. I never saw any of that, and I also didn't go for it either because of all my other situations I had going. I couldn't juggle another ball, but I guess what I got from that was things will come back around to you again. So be careful what you do and but it also kind of vindicated that, or, you know, confirmed that, especially in the Lord's house, don't mess around like that. Yeah, I'll pick up the rest on the third part, and that should be it, that last one. But um, I'm gonna go get some tea, because my throat is killing me, and uh, you'll be easy. I'll holler at you, one. Mm. Mm.